Hey everyone, welcome back. So my voice might sound a little bit sexy. I'm just getting over a head cold. Just a little bit of a disclaimer. So this is the recap video. I bought nothing for the past 30 days. As in for the month of January, I committed to a no buy where I decided I was not going to buy any new clothes, shoes, makeup, accessories, or skincare for the entire month of January. So in today's video, I just thought I would give you a quick recap of what I bought or didn't buy, how much money I spent, and all the things I learned by doing a no buy for 30 days. For those of you who don't know me, welcome, my name is Christina. I talk all about intentional living, intentional spending, and how to get the most out of what you've already got. If any of that sounds interesting to you, then please give this video a thumbs up. It helps support my channel so much it's for the algorithm. We all must bow down to the algorithm. And if you like videos like this, please subscribe. So quick recap, I decided to do a no buy January because for the year of 2022, I really didn't put any sort of restrictions on myself when it came to shopping or sort of allowing myself to indulge in the things that I wanted. In the past, I've really struggled with things like perfectionism and I have also utilized no buys and principles of minimalism to really help me overcome a compulsive shopping habit and get me out of over $120,000 of student loan debt in six years. So alongside things I did like making more money, I do credit a lot of these behavioral changes that I made to accelerate my debt repayment and completely change my relationship with stuff and shopping. But 2022 was also my first year of being completely debt free where all of my money was my own and I decided to have some fun with it straight up. And especially towards the end of 2022, I was just starting to feel like I had a lot and I was just really getting tired of this constant pursuit of more. Even though I was really happy with the things that I bought and the things I already had, I could really just feel myself sort of going back into a little bit of old habits and just feeling this pressure to pursue newer, better a lot of the time again. So just to kickstart a little bit of a detox and just give myself some room and space to enjoy what I already have, sort of take an inventory and spend some time with it, I decided to do a no buy. For me, the motivation was purely to just take a break. Like in the month of November, I took a break from alcohol and did 30 days of no drinking, which turned into me actually not really drinking at all anymore. So that was a great benefit. And in January, I decided to do a no buy. Out of all the no buy challenges I've done for myself, this one was by far the easiest. And that's not because I'm like a pro at this or I've done so many or anything like that, but I think what really changed this time around was my mindset and my motivation around why I decided to do it. I really approached that no buy, the very first one I did in 2019, from such a perspective of punishment and being angry with myself for past bad behavior. I was a chronic shopaholic, I was an overconsumer, and I had a lot of goals and dreams for myself that I wasn't reaching because all of my disposable income was going to crap. And because of my student loan debt, but I wasn't paying much on my student loan debt because I decided to YOLO the rest of my money away. If you wanna know more about that, I have a ton of videos on this channel. I'll link the playlist here. But I've been doing a lot of thinking about it and I think the greatest difference for me was back then it was all about punishing myself and sort of overcorrecting for previous bad behavior. This time around, there wasn't much of that at all. So it really made doing this challenge so much more peaceful and a lot more relaxed than it's ever been in the past. And it was the most peaceful no buy I've ever done, I think purely because I wasn't looking at it from a perspective of punishment. I think mindset and the reasons why you decide to do this challenge are so important and are so integral to your feeling of success in the challenge. I think a lot of us try to come at it from a perspective of almost like parenting ourselves into better behavior which I think leads us to want to rebel and sort of break the rules, and then that's where the challenge can really crumble. So I think if you struggled in your no buy January, or if you're doing a no buy year, or even some low buy, I think taking a step back and really thinking about the why behind the challenge can really help make things easier. If it's coming from a perspective of punishment or finger wagging or parenting, then I think it can be really hard because the self-talk that can come out of that can be really critical and mean. 
And I think honestly, it truly misses the point of the whole challenge. And truly for me, the reason that I felt like I was able to do it this time was because I wasn't being an asshole to myself, plain and simple. But that didn't come easily right away. So let's get into the early part of the challenge versus the latter and sort of when I noticed that attitude and behavior change. So the first, I would say, two weeks of the challenge were pretty difficult for me because there were a lot of bad habits that I needed to sort of assess and stop doing. I think the month of December was a particularly stressful one for me, so I found myself sort of falling back into old habits of like boredom shopping and TikTok scrolling quite a lot. So I spent a lot of the beginning of January sort of trying to halt those behaviors or doing them like almost. So for example, I'm really into the brand Tibby right now. I've recently discovered Amy Smilovic on Instagram and TikTok and I'm absolutely obsessed with her. Um, I love her style philosophy. I'm actually learning quite a lot from her, but it's making me really want a few Tibby pieces, which is fine. It's gonna happen for me down the road, but in the month of January, it was a no. But as soon as January 1st came along, the Tibby sale launched. And so at the beginning, there was this feeling of like, <gasps> and like frenzy um, and a lot of feelings of FOMO and concern that I would miss out on this sale. But I actually stuck to my guns. I just said, no, you made a promise to yourself. And this time I really wanted to keep it. And so what really helped me here was just reminding myself that there's always gonna be something to want. A lot of these things that I was saving were just because they were on sale items. They weren't things that were on my original like Tibby wish list at all. So over time, I just started to feel a lot more comfortable with that FOMO. And as it actually turns out, the things that I wanted were still on sale in February. I did end up buying a couple of things. I'll show you that in a future video. Um, but actually, those things ended up going on even more sale by the time I bought them. So I did find that very difficult at the beginning. I got very swept up in the what if I miss out, oh my gosh, there's only like a few left in my size, but I was able to tell myself that if you miss it, you miss it. There's always gonna be something to want. Today, it's these acid wash jeans. Yes, that's what I wanted. Tomorrow, it's gonna be something else. So reminding myself of that, and also just being pretty proud of myself that I was able to keep that promise to myself made it a lot easier. And some things I also did instead was I had to come up with new ways to spend my time. So instead of hopping on TikTok and scrolling, which frequently leads me down to a rabbit hole of shopping. I know what I'm doing to myself when I do these things. I found new ways to spend my time. So I started doing things like Pilates. I started watching a lot of Move with Nicole videos and doing like one or two Pilates videos a day of hers. I've been using my Copilot app and doing a lot more workouts. I spent some time reorganizing my wardrobe. I put things away. I reorganized the kitchen. And when I did catch myself shopping, I just wish listed it. So all of these things really sort of helped me kind of come up with new habits, newer, better ways to spend my time that I knew wouldn't put me in the position of being tempted. And it was around week three, which was my birthday. My birthday is January 21st. That's when I started to feel really calm and just sort of really relaxed and like, okay, we're gonna be cruising through the rest of this month. And a difference that I noticed around this point was that in the past, when I especially got super deep into minimalism and just overall thought that stuff and things and like indulging in the wants that I wanted was dumb. I used to think that it was a stupid thing to want and again came from a place of critical self-talk that I found out later was really sort of dishonoring a lot of what my authentic self wanted. So back then it was easy for me to say no to myself to these things because I thought it was stupid and I thought it was stupid and bad that I wanted those things to begin with. Nowadays, I feel like I can really balance that a lot better and doing this no by month really sort of helped me sort of refine that even more. And I felt this sense of calm around that time because I feel like I no longer had my like inner critic, my inner disciplinarian sort of wagging its finger at me and telling me that I couldn't or shouldn't have or want this thing. Instead, I really noticed my self-talk really just being like, hey, cool, that's really nice, but you know, we're on this challenge, we've committed to this, let's save that for later and come back to it. 
And that self-talk too also just gave me this sense of space and separation from that wanting and the actual buying of the thing. Now that we know how January went and what I think I got from it, I just wanna show you guys what I bought and how much I spent. So all I did was just sort of keep it on my phone and I, anytime I stuck to my low buy and didn't spend any money outside of my rules, which was really all month, but I, I'll show you, um, I just gave it a little check mark. So the first week of January went really well. I just spent $72 on takeout sushi. And then on January 9th, I spent $107 on my nails and I picked them off. <laughs> so there's that. This is where I splurged. I spent $238 on a book. This is she. This is basically like an encyclopedia of style. It's meant to be a little bit luxury. Um, plus it was in US dollars and I had to pay duties and shipping. That's why it came to 238 Canadian. But books and education and things that I see value in from a learning and knowledge perspective was allowed for my low buy. So I decided to buy this. It's The Creative Pragmatist by Amy Smilovic. Just like a very cool, comprehensive, aesthetic, chic encyclopedia of style. Super inspiring. There's a lot I learned about style from this book. So I'm going to be sharing with you guys in future videos because I think you'll get a lot of value out of it. This was a splurge for sure. Then we're good, we're good, we're good. January 11th, I spent $5 on coffee and a bagel. Got another thing of sushi. On the 18th, I spent $32 on a fitness class pass. I think I was starting to feel like the pressure of New Year's resolution. So I thought I would just try a workout class. It was okay, I don't think I'll go back. I'm really liking the Pilates better. On the 19th, I spent $14 on a salad at work because I didn't prepare. On the 20th, I went out for a coffee in person with the great Alyssa Bell Tempo. So I spent $9 on coffee and croissant hanging out with her. On the 21st, it was my birthday. I bought nothing. Jeff got me cupcakes. We bought some steaks, made them at home, and it was a great chill day and I didn't feel tempted to buy myself anything because by this point I was starting to feel just really chill and relaxed in the no buy. I was having fun devouring the book, applying some of the things I learned from the book to my wardrobe. I was decluttering by this point. I was doing workouts. It was a chill time. It was good. Then on the 23rd, I had to spend $951 to renew my pharmacist license. So if you guys don't know, I still work as a pharmacist full time on top of doing this. You gotta pay every year to keep your license. That's essential spending. On the 26th, I ran out of my shampoo, conditioner, and heat protectant. A brand that I keep going back to is Davinus. I've been using them since like university. So I stocked up and I spent $187 on that. That's the only replacement that I needed to do this month. In February, I need to buy sunscreen, my CeraVe cleanser and moisturizer, and a new concealer, but I was able to make it last throughout the month, so. And then on the 29th, we had another gift card and you and spent $30 on ramen. So that's how my no buy January went. Again, it was probably one of the most relaxed and sort of peaceful no buys I've ever done. And that transition really happened for me when I stopped fixating so much on the stuff and what I can versus cannot buy and really just sort of listened to my own self-talk and reminded myself of why I was doing this. It was cool for this to finally come from a place of kindness for myself and not one of punishment because it's something that I should be doing. If you did a no by January or plan to even do a no by year, let me know how yours is going and let me know what you learned. If you like this video, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up. It really is one of the greatest ways you can help support my channel and help it grow. And if you got some value from this video and wanna see more like this, then please subscribe. See you in the next one, guys. Bye.